um, the police told me that it was okay. Uh, that Objection to hearsay, Your Honor. Okay. So I, I can't hear uh, what I have a police talking. report. And okay, um, so hold on. I would hold on, hold on. Okay. he uh, uh, said that he was still afraid to go and that his father- Objection to hearsay. Yeah, so um, uh, no, we have CBS no, workers. I, 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 can't hear, I can't hear what they said. You just have to state factual things. Okay, right. factual things is that my son came home and said that he was- Objection to anything that the child said. <laughs> they, uh, the, the police in Sacramento told me that- Objection to hearsay. Yeah. All right, so- uh, in, in media, and we were told that uh, it is it is totally Objection okay for us to, to go back to our home. And our, our son, who says that he's afraid of you. He is Objection actively lying in order to- I'm sorry. Today, we have a legal battle between a lawyer and a pro se litigant. The pro se litigant is just not grasping how laws and procedures work despite being corrected multiple times. Watching the defendant's attorney legally battle the plaintiff is just hysterical. Aside from the entertainment between the plaintiff and the defendant's attorney, the reason behind the requested TPO alone makes a great hearing. Overall, this is a fantastic case that I had to share with you all. So without further ado, let's get into the video. You can hear what uh, Ms. Simpson. All right, go ahead, Ms. Simpson. Okay, so there's three grounds on which we're seeking dismissal of this case. I filed my motion to dismiss. I don't know if you've had a chance to read that, Judge. Um, but okay, so the the first ground is that this court lacks jurisdiction. Second, this matter has already been litigated and adjudicated twice in California. And third, my client was never properly served with a copy of the petition in this case. On the jurisdiction issue, this court lacks jurisdiction over my client and this matter because the Family Violence Act provides jurisdiction over non-residents only where the acts of family violence are alleged to have occurred in Georgia. And that's OCGA 1913-2B. My client is not a resident of Georgia. He has never been a resident of Georgia. And the petitioner has not alleged that any acts of family violence occurred in Georgia. The basis of petitioner's complaint is an alleged incident that occurred in California on February 6th. Petitioner alleges that the party's six-year-old son returned from parenting time with his father, my client, with a bloody knot on his head. Setting aside for the moment the fact that petitioner has no evidence that my client had anything to do with the scratch on the child's head, it is undisputed that both parties and the child were in California when this incident occurred. That alone dispenses with petitioner's claim relating to the child. This court cannot issue a protective order on behalf of the child based on these allegations because this alleged incident did not occur in Georgia. Therefore, this court does not have jurisdiction as to that claim against my non-resident client. The only other allegation of family violence that the petitioner raises in her complaint is that my client allegedly threatened her life, quote, if you leave California. Again, there's no evidence that my client ever made such a threat because he didn't. But again, you don't need to decide that question, Judge. You only need to determine the threshold question of whether such a threat would constitute an act of family violence that occurred in Georgia. And under both the Anderson and Huggins cases that are cited in our motion to dismiss, it's clear that a communication sent from another state, whether by phone or by email, does not constitute an act of family violence in Georgia. The act of Placing the call or sending the email are deemed to have occurred in the state where the communication was sent. And petitioner does not allege that my client came to Georgia to make these alleged threats against her. She doesn't even allege that she was in Georgia when the threats were made, allegedly made. She claims that my client threatened her if she left California. But even if she were in Georgia, the alleged act itself did not occur here, and the court does not have jurisdiction to enter a protective order based on this allegation. So petitioner's complaint should be dismissed for lack of jurisdiction as to both the claim she made on behalf of the child and the claim she made on her own behalf. The second ground on which we're seeking dismissal is that this matter has already been litigated and adjudicated in California. Petitioner filed a request for domestic violence for restraining order in Los Angeles County on February 9th based on the same allegations regarding the child having a scratch on his head on February 6th. The Los Angeles court, where an ongoing custody case between the parties is currently pending, 
held a two-day hearing on February 17th and 18th, and then dismissed petitioner's request for a restraining order, finding that she had not met her burden of proving her claims, the same claims that she's making here today. Undeterred by her case being dismissed, petitioner refiled her request for a domestic violence restraining order in Sacramento County on March 9th. And again, alleging that the child returned from his father's house with a bloody knot on his head on February 6th. Again, this matter was heard over the course of two days on March. Your Honor, I have by not by the Sacramento court, which found that it was so, not the proper. So, Ms. Holmes, it, uh, when she argues, we'll let you respond. So, if you're taking okay, notes, that's not yeah. true. Okay, so, um, so what she's doing is making an argument. <laughs> it's a motion. So, this is just her. So, it's not really, it's not testimony on her behalf. She's just making an argument. So, what she finishes, I see you're taking notes, then you can respond to her motion. How about that? Yes, um, yes, Your Honor, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, no, it's okay. Go ahead, Ms. Simpson. So this apologize. matter was heard over the course of two days on March 24th and 30th by the Sacramento court, which found that it was not the proper venue to hear the petitioner's claims given the pending custody case in Los Angeles. The petitioner now brings her claim for the third time, again, in an improper venue. And because this case has already been decided on the merits by the Los Angeles court and the Sacramento court has confirmed that Los Angeles was the proper forum to make that decision, Race judicata and judicial estoppel bar this court from retrying this matter and second guessing those decisions. So therefore petitioner's claim must be dismissed. Finally, this case should be dismissed because my client has never been served with a copy of the petitioner's petition. She failed to serve it on him. She only served him with a copy of the ex parte order. He has been able to obtain a copy from the court, but service has not been perfected and the court cannot enter a 12 month protective order without service. Now, we obviously want to be heard on our motion to dismiss, but we're not waiving the defense of lack of service. So in closing, I just want to note the real reason that we're here, if it's not already obvious. Petitioner is desperately seeking a way around the custody orders issued by the Los Angeles court. The custody case in Los Angeles is not going her way, and she is abusing the court system in an effort to get her way. Petitioner has been ordered not to remove the child from California while the custody case is pending. And now that her alimony has run out, she wants to move with the child to Georgia and the Los Angeles court has denied her request to do so. So she's looking for a way around that. A psychologist has been appointed as the custody evaluator in the Los Angeles case, and he's been conducting an investigation. The case will be going to final trial there later this year, but petitioner doesn't wanna wait for that trial. She's already absconded to Georgia with the child multiple times. She's forum chopping, trying to find a court that will let her circumvent the orders of the Los Angeles court. And this is important. The most recent order from the Los Angeles court, the same court that heard and denied petitioner's first request for a TPO, that order awards my client sole physical and sole legal custody of the child. Petitioner is awarded supervised visitation. Petitioner was ordered to deliver the child to my client on April 22nd at the Sacramento Police Department. And the order provides that if she fails to deliver the, the child, the Los Angeles District Attorney Child Abduction Unit is appointed to locate the whereabouts of the child, take possession of the child and deliver the child back to my client. Petitioner failed to deliver the child on April 22nd. Instead, she went on the lam with the child and three days later filed her petition in this case. So she and the child are currently in hiding. She has been withholding the child from my client since February 23rd, despite the valid, valid court order granting my client sole legal and physical custody, he's not been able to see his son in over two months. So we're asking this court to issue an order domesticating the April 22nd California order, a certified copy of which was filed along with our motion to dismiss, so that my client can work with law enforcement here to retrieve his son. So more court and law, law enforcement resources will have to be devoted to this, all because petitioner wants to keep the party's child away from his father and is trying to pit one court against each, uh, another so that she can get away with that. We're asking that her case be dismissed and that petitioner be ordered to pay all of the attorney's fees that my client has been forced to incur in defending against petitioner's latest attempt to evade the California court orders. And we're asking for those under both 1913-4A-10 and 915-14. Ms. Holmes, now it's your turn to respond to her motion. Okay, so this isn't you making your case. Um, this is you responding to her motion of the, the orders in California and things yes. like that. 
Go ahead. Yes. Um, and I will also attach the um, additional evidence. First, I wanted to say that the things that she is saying um, is definitely hearsay. I have spoken to all law enforcement in Sacramento. I have spoken to the um, child abduction unit in Los Angeles. I would like to start by saying I would never relitigate the same issue. February, uh, the, the violence that happened on February 6th, um, I when I immediately came here, um, um, my ex-husband has manic issues of uh, violence. He is known to be violent. And I have a history of him being violent. On February 6th, when he harmed um, our son, I was I told the Sacramento police that we were fearful because he has broken into my house and abused me before. I said that we were fearful, uh, and that's also provided in the um, police report from even 2017 that I sent in evidence. Um, the police told me that it was okay. Uh, that Objection to hearsay. You're right. Okay. I can't hear oh, what I have a police talking. report. And okay, um, so hold on. Hold, hold on. Okay, so this is so what you need to respond to is like her motion. It's okay. Not, because, it, it, it's not testimony about anything that's happened, so I can't okay. hear anything else anybody else said. Okay, um, so when we, we were transferred, we, we came from California to Georgia on the 6th, and then um, what were, were made to come back. DFAX was even com contacted. He contacted me and told me if I, I didn't return back to California, he was going to find a way to take RJ in and have somebody harm me. We came back and then we litigated there. Um, Los Angeles County does not have jurisdiction over the original um uh, um, uh, violence or any at all because he doesn't live in Los Angeles County. The only person that is form shopping to make sure that the um, uh, violence is heard in a venue that is beneficial to them is Rashawn Holmes. He is an athlete that feels like he is above the law and can get his way. He is on record um, um, violating uh, orders. The or we have final orders that we that we fought for. The the person that is making these. Uh, um, orders for, uh, as far as the orders for April 22nd, those orders were made after he already threatened to call the child abduction unit in Los Angeles, and I called them first. Rashawn does not live in Los Angeles and never has had a lease in Los Angeles. I used to live in Los Angeles. I've been a resident of Georgia since November. Um, the person that made those orders is a private mediator that gets paid $2,000 an hour by my ex-husband. He is a mediator to the stars and he is known for getting rich men their way. Rashawn lied to the Sacramento court. Um, when I did do the, um, uh, the domestic violence restraining order on March 9th, I contacted the district attorney's office before I even did so because um, and her saying that he hasn't seen um, Rashawn and uh, RJ in two months is not true because after the sixth, I complied and let RJ go again from the 20th to the 23rd um, of, of February. So he returned again after the abuse that happened on March uh, uh, on um, February 6th. And when he returned back to me, he uh, said that he was still afraid to go and that his father- Objection to hearsay. I can't hear I can't hear what they said you just have to state factual things okay right. factual things is that my son came home and said that he was objection to anything state. that the child said <laughs> yeah okay. so it's like so what she's talked about are court orders you know, okay so uh, and the court order from March 9th was made after there was more alleged violence based on the things that was said to me by my child. I then took that information to the proper venue. They, uh, the, the police in Sacramento told me that- Objection I to hearsay. All right, so I, I, I can't hear what the police said. Okay, yes, but um, I have, I was under the belief that I had jurisdiction in Sacramento and so did the judge on March 9th for the additional um, violence that took place and they issued me a restraining order. This motion to dismiss is what he always does because he have he has the money to get a, a, a lawyer and, and a, submit anything into the court. He tried to motion to dismiss the February, uh, the March 9th um, uh, DVRO three times and the judge, uh, exactly what we're doing now, and, and the judge dismissed it. 
Um, when we did finally go to court on March 30th for extending the DVRO, he lied and told the um, Sacramento, California court, which is in our orders, that he does not live in Sacramento, even though that's where he currently is and that's where he was served. He, in order, so forum shopping, in order to get the forum in your, uh, in your proper, where you want it to be heard, you lied to the court and told them that you did not live in Sacramento and you did. So, don't, so in don't, don't, don't talk to him. You, you I'm, I'm sorry. That's okay. And in order to, one second. Okay. So in an effort, in an effort to continue to get his way, I'm sorry, I had to move around because my son was um, in an effort to uh, get his way, he is doing the same thing that he did in Sacramento because he just doesn't want the violence to be heard. Um, so after March 30th, um, uh, he, he was uh, him and his family began attacking me uh, in, in media, and we were told that uh, it's it is totally I okay for us to go back saying. to our home in Georgia. We were only there on visitation purposes. Um, after March 30th, after he lied and told the uh, judge that he did not live in Los Angeles, we spoke to the California um, a domestic violence advocate for the Secretary of State, and. I, I filled out a good cause notification and I filled out a safe at home program with the, uh, with it, which is a domestic violence program um, in California in order to make sure that I lawfully uh, came back to my home in Georgia. We were in domestic violence shelter from March 30th. I even gave him the opportunity to uh, uh, meet with RJ, with um, a mediator to to speak about the things that RJ was saying about what happened to him. He refused. He is only interested in con controlling me, controlling RJ, and controlling the situation. Um, also, he had the violence has uh, taken place here. A defax worker came to speak to RJ separately, and um, this is about a, a my my six year old saying that he is afraid and. If that wasn't the situation, then the defects worker wouldn't have issued us a safety plan. Also, the police, the Sandy State Springs Police and the Fulton County Police were contacted. I showed them those orders and the orders from a private mediator that is privately paid on a fiduciary, um, uh, um, in, in a fiduciary fashion by one party. Those th those are not orders by a superior court judge. The, the, that is not a superior court judge. I complained to the commissions on judicial performance, and I filled out a um, um, a appellate and a motion to uh, dissolve the stipulation. What we're in is a mediated stipulation by a hired neutral who is not supposed to be making changes to our stipulation, as you see from the letter that I received from the. Um, um, commissions, judicial commissions of performance. He is not a judge. He is not a member of the bench. And he is not a member. And, and the orders that he creates are paid orders by $2,000 an hour, the stipulation. That is the only thing that I, um, the evidence that I wasn't able to provide. This, uh, and, and he is blatantly, if I've done something wrong, it's because I, uh, I'm just trying to protect our our son who says that he's afraid of you he is Objection actively lying son. in order to, i'm sorry he okay. is actively and purposely go forum shopping in order to get get out of each court he lied to the sacramento court to say oh i don't live here and now here he is saying um oh a superior court judge if uh, i call the los angeles uh court and and they they know nothing about these orders this is a mediator that is a mediator to the stars he gets paid hourly by my ex-husband in order to give his way. If he stops giving his um, the mediator that made these orders about abduction, and uh, this mediator has also done all different types of um, un unlawful practices in order to give um, my ex-husband his way because he is a rich athlete that feels like everything is supposed to go their way. Um, I have been in compliance with everything. We have been divorced since 2019. I have been in compliance with everything that uh, lawfully that I was supposed to do. I would never do anything unlawful because I don't even have the millions of dollars to fight in court. He does. 
what I'm saying is true and provable down to each letter with a piece of evidence. I wasn't able to provide all the evidence um, this morning. I was planning on doing all of that before the 13th, but um, to say that she, the, the violence didn't happen in Georgia, it absolutely has. Um, he has, he and his family members are on a line actively threatening me, showing guns, and I have text messages of him threatening my life the day that I served him. I served him. Um, um, and he uh, he was served to the best of my ability. Um, I, I served the document that was I received after our hearing on Monday. Um, I also checked with um, domestic violence advocacy here just to make sure uh, that what I'm doing cannot be considered um, forum shopping because that's not something that I would ever want to do. He is the one that now provided evidence saying that there, uh, this superior court judge ordered, the, the Los Angeles Superior Court knows nothing about the orders that the mediator Thomas Trent Lewis has issued. Thomas Trent, Trent Lewis is not a member of the bench and the orders that he has created, he is a, he is a uh, neutral hired by a law firm. So this and, says um, this says that uh, uh, Judge Lewis is retired. He is retired. He's retired not a judge. But, well, uh, so I mean, you can tell by my accent. I'm not. I'm not a California lawyer, and don't uh, you know? Think I practice law in California? Wouldn't even try to practice law in California. But I will tell you that. Uh, Yeah. There are retired judges and senior judges here in Georgia that would take some offense to saying that they're not real judges. So, oh no, yeah. I'm I'm just I I apologize, Judge. Definitely, no, 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 I'm just saying. So, so this, uh, I'm Thomas, speaking in terms of this case. He is not. He, I'm sure he he spent yeah. time on the bench. He is a retired judge. Well, but that's what as, I'm saying. So, and it looks like, but so let me kind of get you back on track. All right, if you don't mind, Miss Simpson, please. Okay, so. Uh, it looks like these are orders that are signed uh, that have been submitted. Um, findings after a hearing, federal custody support. It's, I mean, they're orders that has his electronic signature, you know, and it looks like they were sent to a couple of different lawyers. Uh, yes. Um, one of these lawyers, yeah, yours. So it was on once January the 3rd. There's another one that was, uh, what, April the 22nd. So tell yes. me, what is it that you have to say about the April the 22nd? Because the way I'm reading this, you correct me if I'm wrong. Because, you know, like I said, I like to tell people, I know when I open my mouth, uh, no. Holmes, you got to keep, keep your camera on, Mr. Holmes. Uh, hold on, wait on Mr. Holmes, because we don't know if he's there and he's got to keep his camera on, because this is akin to walking out of my courtroom when you turn your camera off. Um, Your Honor, I, I don't know what's going on yeah. with my camera. I'm still here. Did, did you get a phone call? Sometimes you got to, is it, a, you got to like. No, no, ma'am. I, I went on mute and the video cut off and I'm hitting to start the video now and it's not starting. All right. Does it do that if I say ask to start video? There you go. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. yeah, no, sir. That's fine. So, um, so I'm looking at this April 22nd order. Okay. Are you mm -hmm. familiar with it? Yes. Okay. So it was si electronically signed by Judge Lewis uh, on April 22nd. And in here, okay, so this is where I'm kind of having some, I mean, because, I mean, I can call out, I don't know what time it is out there, but uh, I can call out there. It says, let's see, I want to make sure if you got, got it in your hand, let's see, da, 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 okay, there's a case number. Uh, you're the petitioner. Mr. Holmes is the respondent or def plaintiff and defendant. Uh, so it says, uh, uh, it says, uh, respondent shall select three professionals and monitors to provide said names to you. You shall then choose three of those professionals and monitors that you may use for your visitation. So it looks like at some point, uh, you're supposed to have supervised visits and pay supervisor, right? I'm yes. sorry, he's going to pay supervisor. So this was on the 22nd. Yes. And that supervised was made so this was, and it's signed by Judge Lewis. Okay, so hold on, back up. Okay, listen, go back. Sorry, these are all scanned in. Let me get back to. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's Mark. All right. So the findings after a hearing. There was a hearing. The hearing proceeded at April the 
Give me share my screen so you can see where I'm at. No, I can see. I, I know. I, I know what you're. Okay. Doing. So it says it was uh, April the 21st at 8 a.m. Good for Judge Lewis getting up there. <laughs> I like it. All right. So uh, 8 a.m. Uh, let's see. Miss O'Brien appeared at 8 a.m. on behalf of you. Filed the substitution of counsel because you said you wanted to. I guess that's pro se, but pro per. So you want to represent yourself. Uh, so there's mo modification, custody and parenting time. Here it said that sole legal and sole physical custody was awarded to Mr. Holm. Yes. And after I contacted the family, um, the Stanley Moss family court in Los Angeles and um, also contacted the um, uh, district attorney's office in Los Angeles, a orders that are made by a private mediator fiduciary, um, can, he cannot change our final orders. They are supposed to be a neutral and um, he does not have- well, This, this, not is, this is a court order. So, I, I mean, like I said, I wasn't there. It says this is a court order. So that was and a that, hearing. And that was made and it's uh, because, and, and mind you, uh, you know, the defendant does pay Judge Lewis. And the night before that happened, Whatever. I made them aware that we were in a domestic violence shelter and how we were being treated was unfair. And I will be alerting the presiding judge that presides over uh, um, this uh, stipulation because everything that is uh, put in our stipulation and if there are changes made is supposed to go through the actual Stanley Moss family court. What we, when we have Zoom court, they're, they're similar to meetings. Uh, so when he, that was his attempt to the night before I emailed them and told them that we were in a, um, domestic violence shelter and that, uh, you know, I was still being threatened because of course the defendant is not going to say what, what he's been doing. Um, and it, it even down to the violence that take, took place with, or with, um, our son. Let me tell you what, so, so, so I I don't know what kind of athlete he is. I don't care. I don't care. But really don't that care. was his attempt. Uh, you know. Look at here, I don't care. Famous. I'm famous. I'm a big deal. In Atlanta, I'm a big deal. Okay? So he ain't a big deal. Ain't nobody out here a big deal but me. I'm kind of a big deal. All right? Yes. And look and at once, um, I guess he, really, he probably uh, he's, Hold on. He's probably tall, so he probably plays basketball. And I'm not impressed with that. I'll tell you why I'm not impressed with that, because I have played basketball longer than LeBron James, but it doesn't mean I'm doesn't mean he's better than me, okay? So yes. bring LeBron out here, and I'll whip him too. And I played basketball longer than him, so don't mean he's better than me, okay? So yes. all that athlete stuff, I don't care. And I'm glad you said that, Your Honor, because honestly, we can't act like that aspect doesn't exist, because that is one of the reasons why I'm getting threatened. And that's one of the reasons why he wants to stay in private court, because okay, he wants the hold violence. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so I don't care. So don't worry about talking about money. Okay. I don't care. I don't care about that. I don't care who he is. And, you know, I'll meet you on the basketball court, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell you. But I'm just telling you, okay? That's it. So I don't care about what I care about these allegations of violence and like Ms. Simpson had brought up when has Mr. Holmes been to Georgia and commit because because here's the thing it, it something has to have happened in Georgia so when's Mr. Holmes been to Georgia and to to been to Georgia and committed acts of violence yes and what I'm what I'm going off of for that is I look to see does it says does he have ties in Georgia does he work here and did the violence happen in Georgia he absolutely has threatened me. I've received the threat, the, the threatening um, here. But has he all, been to Georgia to threaten you? And is he it? also put a tracking device in our in RJ's bag that we had to get rid of. And um, his um, RJ's, uh, uh, he gave him an iPad, and he was tracking our every move, which is how he knew exactly where we were February six. So the violence, um, and, well, and when you I- You were in court on April the 21st. You were there, right? Yeah, were you there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you heard this judge say all this, right? Yes. But right. I knew that it was, it from, it, it, was, it was based on the, the judge, uh, that, 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 me, uh, that, that mediator and private judge in Rashawn are- Friends. He pays his, he pays the bill. And when I emailed to the night before that court um, expressing that, I believe that, you know, the, the judge just wanted to, or the mediator, he, it's his job to give Rashawn his way. 
um, because he's the one that's paying, putting the bill. And he's uh, Rashawn is just actively trying to save face because now things are the private court is how he can keep his history of abuse quiet. Once things came um, to public in Sacramento, that's when um, he began. Uh, things were in the media and he the, the, the threats came harder and he was upset. He is trying to keep things in the private sector, um, which only happens in California, New York and Nevada, where you can even have a private mediator make changes to your stipulation. But that's what he's trying to do because he wants to protect his brand. He wants to protect um, things like that. He doesn't want things to be able to be seen in the public specter of the court. But if there is allegations of, 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 of abuse, it should not be covered up by any private court process. Um, I'm never- I'm just trying done. to get you back focused on what has happened in Georgia. Yes, yes. So what has happened in Georgia, and that's why I immediately contacted law enforcement here. If I was wrong, law enforcement, uh, and, I, and I, I will comply. If I'm wrong right now, I will comply. All I'm doing is trying to protect RJ. So no, I, I understand. And, and, and on here, you're important, he's important, but this child is important. So, you know, so Ms. Simpson, I'm, do you have some contact information for these folks out in uh, LA? The child of... Um, I've not spoken with the child abduction unit in Los Angeles. I have contact with law enforcement here, and I've been in contact with his attorney in California. Um, I I, not that it's important to the issues before us, but I, I've been looking for it. I do have a document that Ms. Holmes signed agreeing to Judge Lewis being appointed as the private judge in this matter. As I understand it from uh, Mr. Holmes' counsel in California, that is permissible in California to have a private judge appointed to make decisions in your case. Uh, the certified court order from the Superior Court of Los Angeles County issued by Judge Lewis it is a valid court order. Um, but again, that doesn't have anything to do with this case and whether or not the violence that Ms. Holmes is alleging actually occurred in Georgia, which it didn't. And you've asked her several times and she's not giving you a straight answer about anything that's happened in Georgia that my client has come to Georgia to commit any kind of fa family violence. So, the, so I, tell I, me about I, that rest again on my motion to dismiss. Your so, Honor, I just wanted to make sure that I made it clear that um, I am saying that when I I have contact with the Los Angeles County. Okay. Um, um, Focus. Uh, Focus on me. What acts of violence has he committed here? The harassment, the threats, the stalking of having um, a tracking device in, in our son's bag. And even as now, this is our safe place. This is our home. When the um, So the acts of violence that took place here, the moment that RJ was hit, RJ came here with a bloody knot on his head. And um, here, his, his father is actively threatening, even with this um, mediator uh, trying to but but actively even email uh, uh, texting me, um, him and his family uh, are saying things, threatening and harassing me online, and not to mention his fans who he um, uh, 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 insulted me on his Twitter and has his fans attacking me daily, sending me death threats, calling me a gold digger. Um, he is uh, his him and his family are actively um, saying I'm gonna get you. Um, uh, his, uh, you know, ins insulting me, calling, you know, I'm going to get you, you have to deal with us. That's what his, you know, his family is saying that I'm going to do, I'm going to get you, you have to deal with us. And this is, I, I express these things and, and, and for the thing of forum shopping, I told the facts this, I told the police this, I even told the police the orders that were made by the, me um, the mediator on the fiduciary standpoint. They so, said that so, I have. Okay. When has he been here? How many times has he been here? Besides, oh, the he comes here um, often throughout the year. He used to have a property out here, and he comes here at least four to six times a year. And he has a W two. He has a Georgia W two. Okay, so but that has nothing to do with family violence. He, he probably plays here, whatever. So, but what, what, when he's been here, like, you just what has happened here is what I'm trying to. Um, most of the things that have happened here have been electronic um, with the, like I said, the stalking, the harassment, uh, the, the harassment and the stalking 
um, happened physically because he physically placed an item in our son's bag in order to track us. Then the harassment. When, 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 was, when, was, that, when was that allegedly done? That was in February. That was in February. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's February of this year. Yes, ma'am. Okay, gotcha. So let's back. So have you been to court in Los Angeles, Sacramento, wherever, California, on that issue? On that issue? No, only about the violence to my son's head. So you never brought up the tracker? Well, I, I mean, I brought it up, but that was that was in addition to like, you know, I definitely uh, brought it up, but that was in addition to, you know, I want to make sure that I'm being completely truthful i brought it up but uh, that wasn't the reason like saying oh because i had bigger things to worry about which is uh the the violence so i definitely brought up that we were being tracked and um as well as my previous lawyer brought up that um that is stalking and harassment that he put a um i a ipad in or uh with the find my iphone on it so that he can know exactly our every move and um then the uh, threats, I, I have the, the text message, the, th the threat text messages, as well as his uh, mother tweeting and said, you're going to deal with me. But that's now, what his mother. I just need to know about him and violence. Oh, him. Well, I've received texts on the, the day that I served him. I received a text saying, just wait, uh, you know, a, a threatening text. I, I have that and I submitted that as well. And um, that's what I have. I, I've sent those um things as well and when um the defects worker did come and speak to rj alone for 30 defects minutes defects where defects where not defects i'm sorry i'm um, here georgia okay okay so okay got you right there okay so what's your court date on that oh it's an investigation um d dfs no i uh, I, I get it i did because i sit down in juvenile court so here let me show you how juvenile court works okay somebody makes a complaint Defects goes out and investigates, and then if it rises to the level of need to be looked at, you get a court date. So that's what I'm curious, what's your court date? I'm not aware of um, my court date, Your Honor. I just- when, um, when did you make the report with defects? That was um, Thursday, I want to say the uh, 19th or the 18th, or the 19th. Of? Uh, and um, of, of April. And this, um, I also provided this in our evidence, the safety plan that was made uh, by the case, my caseworker okay, um, was on. made on okay, the on. All right, so I, I gotta focus you back on what has happened physically here, here in Georgia, here, because you said he did this in February, so that would have mean you would have been back in California. So what's happened here? Um, the threats, the stalking, and the harassment, the tracking device, and the threats but, on my life. But he's called order. you on the phone. But he's called you on the phone, or or somebody's tweeted or snapped or whatever they did. They've done that, okay. But I, I want to know what. Tell me what you have. Uh, this is a court order. This is what so, and, and what Miss Simpson said is that you're forum shopping coming here because you don't like the court order that Judge Lewis did April the 22nd. If you call, I've already um, put in a motion to dissolve that stipulation. If you call the Superior Court family, if you call the family court right now, they will tell you they know nothing about these orders. I promise you. If you call the family court, not Judge Lewis, not signature resolutions that Judge Lewis, is, uh, Lewis looks for, they will tell you that it doesn't even look like we have gone to court since 2019 because that's the last time we went to public court in the actual family uh, court realm. And, and when I called- well, actually I think the Ms. Simpson said she submitted a certified copy to the clerk's <laughs> office. So certified <laughs> copies are when things, orders have been filed because mm -hmm. of the clerk's office and she paid money. He went by there, had somebody go by, somebody went by, got it, got a little stamp, a little seal sent it to her so she filed a certified copy here so these these are filed in there in los angeles so somebody's not being completely honest with you or not looking uh deep enough Be so um so see it says at the top of it where it says electronically filed by superior court of california los angeles 422 at 2 17 p.m sherry r carter executive officer clerk by s uh, baraja deputy clerk 
So it's like here, when Miss Free files something, it's that same exact thing on there electronically. So this, these records are in the clerk's file out there in Superior Court in Los Angeles. So yes, I, and I'm when still I still kind of try to focus you back here because I still want to waste anybody's time. Now, I'm, and and since you don't have a lawyer, I'm, I'm really trying to give you a lot of leeway. I know Miss Simpson's getting frustrated with me, but she understands. So I just want to know what he's done here. Yes, ma'am. Because um, since April the 22nd, a judge, paid for a judge, retired judge, brand new judge, you know, whatever judge. Because they do, I know they do, because they got all these, you know, out there, they do this, you know, private thing and people agree to it. So, and here we kind of call it like uh, uh, arbitration and things like that. So we'll do some things like that here are judicially hosted settlement conferences. But what I'm wondering here is April 22nd, you were there, or April 21st, this order was issued on the 22nd. So why did you come back to Georgia and bring the child here? I was I was already there. I, I was I was already here. I contacted all law enforcement. I was I was I was already here, and I was told that um it it was okay for me to come here. Who I, oh, the, in our police report, in our police report, I told the police that we were coming here, and the um I filled out a safe at home uh and and a good form notification right. because we were in a domestic violence shelter. Okay, so you you. You've alleged these same things in a couple different counties there. No, not the same things. The, the harassment text messages, these are new. Okay. I, I, never, I would never just keep doing the same thing. I'm just trying to let you know the history of violence. But these exact things that I'm arguing with you have not been argument, argument, um, argued in Sacramento as far as the um, harassing uh, and, and the threatening because he just wants to be able to control and and have me be in a place where he's not even going to be because he's about to get traded but you want us to be able to travel around with a child that has adhd and that you is is saying that you harmed him and is afraid of you and when the dfcs worker came and spoke to rj alone she put a plan in place saying that there is present objection i'm going to Object to hearsay as to what the defects worker said or putting a safety plan. I've provided the safety plan for you all as well. I still object to hearsay. <sighs> I got a um, feeling this defects worker hasn't reached out to Miss Simpson or to Mr. Holmes. They have. She has reached out to Mr. Holmes, and Mr. Holmes has oh, not. Well, we don't. Well, we don't know that because she's not here. Oh, okay. I was just letting you know. Um, she she did tell me that she objection to what she said. So we could, if we could get you back on, is there anything specific that he has done here? Did he come here and sit outside of your house? Did he come here and follow you around? Did he come here and, and, and stand in your front yard and scream at you? Did he come here trying to track you down? Yes. Well, not not physically. He just um. All all I, I'm just gonna tell you the truth, and if it you know that's, that's the truth. Yeah. And so the truth is that he has he has threatened my life via text message and that he has threatened um, to, you know, take RJ and have me never see RJ again. And um, and he has uh, tracked us and stopped us here. And 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 that's what I have for here in Georgia. And how old, um, how old is RJ? Six years old. And he has ADHD and on the autism spectrum. Okay. okay, so where is he at right now? He's with me. Okay. Well, I mean, can you can you if I put this in a breakout room, can you put him on the camera? Absolutely. All right. So I can talk to him, Miss Simpson. You have any objections with me talking to him? Nope. Miss Simpson, I don't. I don't. Okay. Okay. One moment, I'm getting him right now. Okay, and then if when you hand him the phone, I want you to I want you to leave the room because I'm gonna put him in a breakout room and I want to talk to him all by myself. Sounds good. I'll do that right now. Um, I'm gonna just put you in his room. How's that? Oh, okay. Do you want me there as well, Your Honor? Uh yeah, you can stay. You can stay here. I'm just gonna chat with him. See. One moment. RJ, honey. 
Arjay, honey, come here, baby. Come here, please. Madam Cora, put a book on off the record for a second. I will. Hi, friend. Hi, friend. Hey, boy. Are you gonna Are you gonna let him hold the phone for me? Or send yes, a bell for him. All right, I'm gonna What's put us. What's up, big boy? Oh, uh -oh. put us in the breakout uh -oh. room. Uh -oh. No, please sit down. Here. Hey, RJ. What RJ, up, big boy? boy? Tell him, Dad. Tell him to be cool. Talk with me for a second. Hey, Brent. <laughs> Honey, please come and sit down and talk. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I ain't seen him please? in so long. He, he got so big on me. He ran away because he doesn't like to talk on the phone to his dad. He's seen me chasing him. Okay, RJ, but, please. I think be Here, I'll put I'll put us in the breakout room so he won't yeah, be able to. Yeah, because he's like I said, he's actively afraid of his father. That's All right, join the breakout room. Hit the little thing to join the breakout room. Be back, Mister Holmes. Miss Simpson, Madam Court Reporter. She should come back in here. He's kind of shy. I showed him some magic. There he is. I showed him some magic. There you go. There's mommy's friend. You can talk to her, and I'll give you a peppermint. Okay. We, we outside of the breakout room, though. You you wanted to see my magic again, RJ? You ready? I get your yeah. peppermint. All right, I got it. This is gonna, I'm gonna be showing everybody my magic, though. Okay. Well, this is like the Wizard of Oz. I'm pulling back the curtain. You ready? Yeah. All right. What's this? <gasps> <laughs> Boom. Uh oh, let's see. There we go. That was magic, right, RJ? Yeah. All right. You going to learn how to do that? Yeah. All right, I want to see it when you do it. And your grandma is my superhero too. And I bet your grandma bought you that shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Grandmas are great, aren't they? Yeah. All right. We go. You can put your mom back on here. Perfect. You all sit? Yeah. You just say thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, RJ. Can I go play now? You can go play now. <laughs> play. Yeah! Can I Thank go with you, you RJ? You're can welcome. I go with you to play? That's what I'm asking. How about Kilo? Are you sure? Because uh, once, uh, are you sure that you, uh, you? Because uh, once he gets back in that yard, it's gonna be hard to wrangle him back in. I'm good. We'll go. Okay. We'll, go we'll go back on the record, Miss Willby. So okay. here's what I'm, here's what I want you to do, Miss Holmes. We're trying to. I'm trying to get in touch with California. Mommy, I watched iPad last night. I'm so sorry. It's okay, please don't watch iPad at night again. It's okay, mommy's gonna talk to mommy's gonna talk to her friend now. But um, your turn. My turn. How about Kilo? Our dog. Oh, Kilo. He, he he can talk to friends too. Okay, go ahead and play Come with on, him. Come Kilo. Sorry, I'm I'm going okay. to the other room now. That's okay. Kiana, is there is there any way I can talk to him? I just ain't. Oh yeah, you can talk to him. RJ, you want to talk to your dad? 
No. You sure? You want to talk to daddy? No. Why not? No, here you go. No, no, no. Wait, we go. We go. We go. We won't do this. We go. We go. We go do this. We go play here. <clears throat> All right. I put you on mute, Miss Holmes. Okay. So, uh, you need a second, Mr. Holmes? Mr. Holmes, you can turn off your camera and uh, and take a second if you'd like. <clears throat> Ms. Simpson, have you had any what getting in touch with the Judge Lewis for me? I was able to contact uh, the attorney in California who's emailing him now. She said that she thinks his staff doesn't get in until 8 a.m. out there, and it's uh, 7.48 right now, so... Uh, How about that we take like a 10 minute break, okay? Give me put you and your client sure. in a breakout room. Sure, that'd be great. All right, uh, let's see. There's you and uh, we'll put you, your client in a breakout room. Okay, yes. Yeah, and then so we'll take a 10 minute break, Miss Holmes. You just have, you may have to call him and tell him to swap over to the breakout room. Your honor. So, uh, since Miss Holmes and Mr. Holmes, I'm just going to drag this out just a wee bit longer. Um, Mr. Holmes, I don't know your schedule. So, you can chat with Miss Simpson, see if um, I want a social worker to chat with RJ since I couldn't get a lot out of him. Um, so, when could you be here, Mr. Holmes? And Ms., well, Miss Simpson, you're here. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Unless you plan on flight, when could you be here? Um, I'm out of season, so I can come to Atlanta whenever is required now. Uh, hey, available tomorrow. I don't know if he could get here by tomorrow. I can, I can be there by tomorrow, Your Honor. My only question, Your Honor, is um, does this mean I do I get to see him at any point during this, or do I still have to stay away? Well, I'm just going to figure, Miss Holmes will bring the rest of her documents. I'm going to finish looking at Miss Simpson's documents. If she has anything else, she'll send it to me and just wait to hear back from that court out there in California. So, uh, but I'd rather Dr. Taylor talk to him since she, that's where she's trained in. Yes, uh, you know, that, that'll that be better. So I guess you should probably, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I mean, I hope it's not head to the airport now. Maybe you and Miss Simpson can make a plan. And I will see y'all at 8.30 and we'll do an order and we'll send it that they will let you folks both in at 8.30. So that means you can get at the courthouse, 136 Prior Street, Mr. Holmes, uh, they will let y'all in early, but you got to have my order with you, okay? And is there a, a physical copy of the order or an email copy? Or an email copy is going to be fine. Well, so we'll email you a copy, just print it out and the deputies will be in, in the morning. I'll give a copy to the deputies. And the deputies will be expecting you, and uh, Dr. Taylor will be there. If she could just swoop RJ up and go talk to him while we have the rest of our little hearing, is that okay with everybody? Yes, ma'am. Yes. In the beginning of this hearing, I couldn't stop laughing. But by the end, I couldn't stop crying. Seeing dad cry just broke my heart. Dad is supposed to have custody of this child, and the mother took off with him and skipped state. I'm sorry that I don't have an ending for you. But, I hope Judge Manning was able to help this dad because I don't believe anything the mother said and what's worse is that it sounds like the mother manipulated the child against the dad. This hearing definitely took a turn that I wasn't expecting. Let me know your thoughts on this hearing in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.